So you're a highly successful woman in two spheres that are very much dominated by men, um, the law and politics. Uh, so what made you think that you could get to the top of those professions? Um, I chose to be a, um, a barrister because actually my grandma was a barrister. She was probably one of the first female barristers in the country. And uh, she really inspired me to go to the bar. Um, and then after a, a number of years at the bar, I was at the bar for, for 17 years, I thought that it would be really important to make a difference. And I thought really hard about how I could do that. And I decided that the best way to do that was through becoming a member of parliament. So I didn't think about where I would be in either of the professions. I didn't uh, aim for anything, but I just wanted to do those jobs. So what's a QC and what did it mean to you become a QC? Uh, a QC uh, stands for Queen's Council and it's Queen's Council because we have a queen. So when the queen dies, it will be King's Council. Um, and uh, technically that's the senior part of the profession. Um, and it was, uh, it was it's obviously a great honour to be uh, a QC and it's quite a long process. So you can't apply to become a QC, usually until you've been practising for about 15 years. Um, so and you've, it's really, really long and difficult application form. The application form took me about a month to complete. Um, but uh, I was really pleased to have been appointed as a, as a QC. Um, you're also the Solicitor General for England and Wales. So what does that job entail? So the Solicitor General works with the Attorney General and we have a number of functions. Uh, the most important one and the biggest one is that we are the legal advisors to the Queen um, and to the government. And so if any, um, and if any department, any Secretary of State has a really difficult issue, um, they can come to us for our uh, legal advice. But we're also responsible for a number of other things as well. So we superintend, which means sort of oversee and supervise the Crown Prosecution Service, uh, which is the body who uh, prosecutes people for crime. Uh, we do the same thing with the uh, SFO, um, uh, which, which is the organisation that uh, pursues people when they've um, committed serious fraud um, and, and serious crime. Is sexism still a problem uh, in the employment of key leadership positions? So I, I do think that, uh, unfortunately, that um, there are still circumstances where you can experience sexism. I do think society has changed significantly since I've been in the workplace. So things that would have been completely inappropriate would be considered completely inappropriate now. Uh, comments people would make, um, the way people would act. I do think that has significantly changed since I started uh, my job when I was around 21 to uh, how people act in the workplace now. But I do, I do think there are probably still some barriers that we need to break down um, in the workplace and outside the workplace. Do you think that you've come up against sexism or gender pre gender prejudice in your working life? I think there's definitely been incidents where I have been uh, treated as a, a, a woman rather than a lawyer. So definitely been incidents when um, I've had, there's been inappropriate behaviour. You're from the north of England, originally from Leeds in West Yorkshire. Do you think there's a north-south divide and do you think that impacts on young women? Um, I am from Leeds and I uh, grew up in Leeds and I'm really proud uh, to be from Yorkshire. A, a lot of business happens uh, in the south and in the southeast um, and and that there is, there is a bit of an economic divide between the North and the South, and we do need to address that. And the government's got a massive agenda on levelling up and making sure that we, that we bring more infrastructure to the North and we bring more uh, jobs to the North, and that is a key part of their agenda. Um, who were your role models when you were growing up? And like, did you have people who inspired you? So as I said, my grandma massively inspired me because uh, she was an amazing woman. She uh, 
she worked till she was 80, even though she had um, one leg amputated. So she was still going to court uh, when she was 80. And she, she did some amazing things. Um, and she had a really amazing way of looking at the world. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of the things that I've achieved are because of the values that she gave me. So for instance, um, she had this quote um, from Robert Browning that she would always say to me whenever I saw her. And it was, you know, what I aspired to be and was not comforts me. And what she said uh, that meant was, you know, whenever you do anything, aim really high, aim higher than you think is possible. And when you don't achieve it, because you won't achieve it, because you've aimed really high and you fail, don't be disappointed in yourself. Just be proud of having tried. And I think that's, that for me, that's been a really important lesson in life um that you shouldn't be scared of going for things and i think sometimes women particularly unfortunately don't always push themselves forward and some people don't put themselves forward because they're scared of of failing and um i'm not really scared of failing because of the values that that she instilled in me and so that for me she's been probably one of the most inspiring people Politics is notoriously confrontational, but do you think, but who do you think is the most talented or outstanding female in position of opposition to the government at the moment? Ooh, in opposition. Well, there's amazing women uh, in Parliament at the moment on all sides of the House. Um, I mean, I'm really proud that, you know, the Conservative Party has had two female prime ministers um, who are, you know, massive role models for women who, who enter into politics. Uh, but you asked me specifically about the opposition, and I think there's some amazing female politicians. You know, I think Jess Phillips, you know, really stands up for what she believes in. You know, she's, she's, she says it as it is, um, and I think she's a great, you know, advocate for the people that she stands up for. Do we have enough women coming through in the politics and the legal world? Definitely not in politics. Uh, we do have a lot of women who enter law and then they, they unfortunately drop off before they get to the senior levels. So there are two problems there. There's not enough women entering politics and, and we need to encourage more people uh, to go into politics because it's really, really important in politics more than anything else, but equally in, you know, in everything, but in politics specifically where you're representing people. It's really important that MPs represent the society as a whole. Uh, it's a different issue in law. In law, uh, similar numbers of women enter into the profession, but when they have families, they find it quite hard to juggle or for whatever reason, you know, we don't have the same uh, number. It, it, there might be a whole host of other reasons as well why women don't, we don't have the right number of women partners in law firms. We don't certainly don't have the right number of women silks. We don't have the right number of women judges. So we need to address why people, why women are falling off uh, the career ladder uh, as other people and uh, men are climbing it. What advice would you give to a young woman that wants to be a member of parliament? Uh, do it. Um, it's really important that, that people put themselves forward. There's a statistic, a horrific statistic, that when a, men, a man, uh, they looked at this in Conservative Party central office, and when a man uh, rings up Conservative Party and says, I'm thinking of applying, can you send me the application form? Uh, it takes him about uh, four days to send back the application, and the average time it takes for a woman to send back the application is about nine months to a year. Uh, you know, they it's really important that that they they um, act and get involved. Get involved at every level. You know, whatever um, political persuasion you're, you're, you you have, it's really important that you get involved locally and and uh, nationally and learn more about it and um, get involved and then apply. Um, as a woman who has a flourishing and successful career, a marriage and two children, do you get fed up? being asked about how you balance those responsibilities and do you feel that there is still a presumption that is for the woman to balance that? It is an issue the, the gender balance issue is something that does dis, that, that is discussed and that women discuss regularly I think it is important uh, to discuss it because 
having a work-life balance is important for many people, whether they're men or women. Um, but, and I think during my time um, in my career, I think um, the, it has become more balanced as to which uh, partner does which roles and it has become less traditional. But again, I do you still think there's more to do? As a QC, a lawyer, advocate and a politician, do you win all the arguments that you have with your husband? Of course I do, yes. And with my children. Actually, the children are harder. Uh, no, uh, I think uh, I think it, it's important in any relationship that you have um, a balance and, um, and that everyone, you know, you come to compromises. But I do try to fight very hard. <laughs> What's it like speaking in Parliament? I love speaking in Parliament. Um, I love speaking in court. They're very, very different things. They, when, you, when you're in court, you are persuading a judge with you know, rational, clear, uh, evidence-based arguments. And speaking in Parliament is completely different um, because you, uh, well, before coronavirus anyway, when the chamber was full, you know, um, the, there's a huge atmosphere and people are interrupting you the whole time. People are trying to catch you out the whole time. You know, the opposition are intervening on you. Um, and there's there's like sort of a charged atmosphere in Parliament, uh, in the in the chamber. So they're very, very, very different. But I, I do uh, enjoy both. Um, can you tell us about the difference that you made to the introduction of the upskirting bill and why you felt that it was important to take a stand? Um, so I'm really pleased that I, 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 I was involved and introduced the, the upskirting bill because what the position was that people could go around and were going around taking pictures of people's skirts um, and there was a gap in the law. So that was a criminal offence when it took place in some places but it wasn't a criminal offence when it took place in others. So for example, uh, it was an offence when you did it in a street, but it wasn't an offence if you did it in a school. And uh, we were really shocked looking at the evidence of the fact that this was happening quite a lot um, and needed, uh, we needed to send a message that it was wholly inappropriate to be doing this sort of activity. And I think, you know, changing the law bringing it to the attention of the public that this was going on and it is absolutely wrong uh, was really important. As a woman in the public eye, do you ever receive contact that makes you feel unsafe? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I've had, uh, like all female MPs and many MPs, I've had a completely inappropriate uh, contact, um, largely on social media. And unfortunately, um, that happens way too regularly to way too many people. Um, and um, it, it really does need addressing. So I know that, you know, social media is an issue, whatever age you are, whatever sex you are, and um, whether you're in the public eye or not. But unfortunately, there's quite a lot of uh, derogatory, um, inappropriate, harassing comments that make their way towards female MPs. And I, like everybody else, have been subject to that. I think that's all the questions we have. But we, uh, we found out that you recently lost your father and we wanted to just, as a panel, express our condolences um, for that. Thank you, Pippa. That's very yeah. kind of you. And really nice to chat to you both. And I wish you both all the best in your, um, in your careers, in your school, in your work on the panel.